What's up guys and welcome to the channel, this is Tyler Toth. Let me ask you a question, have you ever gone to the bank to maybe make a simple deposit, a little withdrawal, maybe pay a bill? Before you know it, you got five or six people hovering around you, offering you their latest product, this home equity line of credit that you need. Even worse yet, maybe you're at home minding your own business and you get a call from your bank, hey, we have you on a list, we wanna sell you this certain thing. You ever wonder why banks sometimes do the things they do and oftentimes when you just wanna get in and out, it feels like you're being held up. Well guys, I'm gonna ask you to take a journey with me today. Throw the suit jacket on. I was a former bank manager for about six and a half years at one of the largest banks in the country. I uh, also managed a smaller bank for about a year or so. So I've got an inside look at a lot of this industry. I've gotten to be on the back end of a lot of the stuff. And I really wanna go over today how you can use banks and not allow them to use you. You know, I have the joke often that, you know, they offer you suckers all the time, but you are a sucker if you allow them to talk you into a lot of these things. Now, banks are great. Uh, they're a necessary part of society. I think they do a lot of good. And if you use them correctly, they can be very beneficial. So I wanna dive in with you today and talk to you about what you should be doing at these banks, how you can use them, and how you can avoid being sold to and getting unnecessary products. So let's dive in. Now, before I hop in, I do wanna say I'm grateful for my time there. The bank was an awesome thing for me and my family provided a steady paycheck, great health insurance, 401k, all the standard stuff that I really needed at a certain point in my life. It also allowed me to build on the side and, and I wasn't super stressed when I was coming home from work. It was a pretty cushy nine to five. So I could find a lot of time to work on my stuff and ultimately fulfill my calling, which was get out. And again, I do think this is not just a slam on banks that they're all terrible and evil and this and that. I think if you use them correctly with this knowledge, you can win and you can flip that coin on them and use banks to serve you instead of feeling like you're getting sold and you're serving their best interest. So the first thing I gotta go over is look, really wealthy people do not keep large sums of money at the bank. That's just not something they do. Now, interest rates have gone up lately. They used to be 0.01% when I was managing. And we still had people park hundreds of thousands, if not more money in these savings accounts. Now that's foolish. There's many, many avenues to earn a higher return. And again, wealthy people are not putting money in their savings account. I think you gotta unlearn this because we learn growing up all the time, oh, put money in savings, savings, it's a good thing. Again, these banks are incentivizing us from the time you're three years old. My kids love going to the bank, man, they get suckers, right? <laughs> so banks are always your friend. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret here. At our bank, the bank that I managed, if you got someone to park money in a savings account and keep it for 90 days, that banker would earn quite an incentive. So for instance, if you got someone to park $100,000 in a savings account and it was new money and they kept it there for 90 days, you'd be incentivized about a thousand bucks. So you can see the incentive structure and why a banker might often say when you come in and say, oh, we got this windfall or we sold this house or this or that and let you know on another little secret, the banks have programs, man. They know when you sell a house, you come up on a call list. This person just came into money, give them a call. They know all these things about you and that's why they target a lot of people often. So when they're trying to sell you, hey, let's, let's talk about our best options and park it here for a while. What they're really doing is trying to get that incentive often. They're trying to say, hey, put it in the savings for 90 days or more, I get paid that way, and then we'll talk about it, we'll set up meetings and we'll learn what to do. Just a few stats here across the way to kind of open your mind up about this. Over the last decade, real estate is up over 48%. By simply parking your money in the S&P 500, it's up 12.8%. Bitcoin is up over 230%, although I don't recommend going wild over there like a lot of people do. Uh, and farmland, which is me and my wife's biggest investment, actually went up a little over 30% in the last two years. There's other great alternative investments rather than just parking your money in a savings and letting the bank make money off that. Look guys, if they're paying you a percent or two, which again is way more than the 0.1% they used to, they're still taking that large sum of money and they're loaning it out at a 10X multiplier. If you give them $100,000 and park it there, they're loaning out a million, which they can legally do, and charging somebody eight, nine, 10%. Look at how much money they're making off you. You should keep an emergency fund only in that savings so that if something happens, yeah, you have money, you can be liquid and go right to it, but you don't need to be parking massive amounts of money in the savings account. It's just not wise. There's other areas to go in. Now I know there's gonna be pushback, Ty, how do I know what to invest in? What do I do? Guys, it's never been easier. This used to be a hard thing, my nephew at 14 opened a Fidelity account. He just bought the S&P 500. He bought VOO. He bought a couple of easy things. And if you have a long-term vision with these things, I'm not gonna say you can't lose, but you can't lose. 
So instead of parking your money in savings, if it has another bucket for it, that it's an investment or something like that, get it out of there. Put it in a fidelity, put it in real estate, start to hire mentors and people that can teach you how to make money off your money. That's how the wealthy keep getting wealthier. We hear all the time about this inequality and all of this stuff, and of course that exists and we should work at that. But the true gap is that the wealthy use their money to make wealth. They don't buy things and, and liabilities that cost them money. They don't park money in a bank and lose money to inflation. They buy more income with their money. They buy assets that continue to produce and make more money while they sleep. This is what you need to learn. So again, there's probably many times where you can think back to, I just went in the bank to make a deposit, pay a payment, whatever, and all of a sudden they're selling me cards. And all of a sudden they're asking me to sit with a banker. And all of a sudden they're trying to get me to download their app and do these things. That's called cross-selling. What they're trying to do is essentially make you what they call in their lingo is sticky. So they figure, hey, if you have a direct deposit coming in, they'll pay an employee $15 if you switch a direct deposit over. Hey, if you, if you open a new checking, They'll pay an employee six up to 10, up to 25 bucks if they get you to open a checking with a direct deposit. Hey, open a credit card. They'll pay an employee six, 10, 12 bucks, somewhere around there. All to make you more sticky. If you got five, six, seven, eight products with that bank, you're not leaving. They know that. They're really big into a lot of these things and cross selling. Now I'm not gonna say any names cause I don't wanna go down that road, but it rhymes with Smells Dargo. And that they got a bank that rhymes with that got in massive, massive trouble many years back. I do think the industry as a whole got better after that. But before that, they were opening fake accounts in people's name, ruining credits. They were pressuring these employees so much to open new accounts and get new money in and all these things. They were harassing family members, outright stealing from people to open accounts where they didn't even have any knowledge of it. They got fined $150 million plus all of these terrible things, right? And I do think the industry got a little better at that. But at the end of the day, again, show me incentives, I'll show you an outcome. They're just gonna be incentivized to do these things. Often the way it works, and I've led a ton of these meetings, they used to call it the daily huddle at the bank I was at. We'd sit around with the employees before the bank opened and we'd talk about the areas that we wanted to try and sell, the things we were pushing. So hey guys, you know, we're, we're really low on our scorecard in credit cards. That can mean a $30,000 plus bonus for the managers and then on the way down, the bankers, thousands of dollars, even tellers getting a piece of that. So, hey guys, we really gotta incentivize credit cards. Well, what if these people don't need credit cards? Well, use this wording. <laughs> they always have these scripts and always have these things that kinda, if people object to, well, I already have three credit cards. Oh, well, guess what? We have this new one that can do this. You can transfer the balance. You can do that. Well, I'm up to my ears in debt. Well, we got a home equity line of credit. It's no interest for six months. And oftentimes what happens, and I hate to say this, but I sold products to people as a banker and as a manager where I didn't feel good about it. I necessarily didn't think that that woman on a fixed income needed another credit card. But in my head, man, I'm getting pressure from above. I'm getting pressure and incentivized to do this. And, and you know, looking back, yeah, I wish I probably hadn't a couple times, but I felt like it was my job to just push these products and to continue to do these things. I always joke that, you know, banks say, what, what's the solution to a person buried in debt? Well, of course, give them more debt, right? Let's help them get out. Let's just give them a, a 12 month interest free. Let's do these things. And we used to see this all the time. I sold the same people card after card when new cards would come out, uh, you know, all of the time. Just and, and looking back, not a great thing to do. Should have been preaching, get out of debt. But again, a bank is very incentivized to keep you in debt and to keep you paying them month after month, which they're going to collect on interest. You know, I often say if you cannot pay your credit card down every single month to a zero balance, you should not have a credit card. It is staggering right now. The average American has seven thousand dollars plus in credit card debt. Now look, if you flip that and you use your credit card wisely and you pay it off every month, my wife and I do this, we earn about $1,200 a year in rewards getting paid back. And that's the way you gotta start to think, how do I win versus these guys instead of them winning versus us? If you keep a big balance and you look at your bill that comes every month, guys, you're paying hundreds of dollars in interest that doesn't even start to hit the principal. So you don't want to get yourself piled up in debt and all well, I can throw on more debt and I can just keep snowballing it here and there. You get yourself into spots you can't get out. So if you can't afford a credit card, never let an employee talk you into opening one. I don't care if it's 12 months interest free. I don't care what they're selling you. If you don't need it, have the courage to say no. And again, make sure they're serving you and you're not serving them. So how do we go about flipping this on the banks and really win versus them? Well, look, number one, the only products you should really have at a bank, in my mind, everyday checking account, keep in there just what you need to pay your bills in and out with a little leftover so you're not stressed, of course. 
a savings perhaps for an emergency fund and I would highly recommend not being in a brick and mortar bank. Online right now, my wife and I are getting about four and a half percent interest, which is magnitudes above what any brick and mortar is gonna offer you. So you can park it in, a, in an online account for your emergency fund. And then guys, to be honest, you don't need anything else outside of that. Now, if you wanna have a wealth advisor, I'm okay with that. I think, man, you know, in my life, it's been very beneficial to have somebody help guide me, especially as I navigated out of corporate, help with taxes, things like that, to have an expert in that field that can help. So I think, yeah, if you wanna have investments with a bank, by all means, go for it. But you should not be parking hundreds of thousands of dollars in a savings. That's just something you shouldn't be doing. You also shouldn't have multiple cards and be up to your ears in debt and be paying these banks every single month. Also, know when you're going in, this is what I want to do. I don't want to be steered in this direction just because an employee may or may not be incentivized towards this. You can use this knowledge against them. Say, hey, why are you offering me that credit card? Do you make money on that? Kind of flip it. Hey, I don't need it. I've already got two. Why would you be offering me that product? That'll usually make them stop pretty quick. So again, guys, I love saying former bank manager. <laughs> I got to fire my company here a couple years ago and kind of do what I love. But I we want to, again, want to reiterate, banks are not scams. They're not all terrible. If you're an informed consumer and you go in knowing what you want to do and how it's going to work for you, you can really use banks to your advantage. They're a necessary thing and a good thing. Thanks for tuning in, guys. I really appreciate it. You know, the last thing I'm going to say, and I end a lot of videos like this, is just to be kind to people. So, you know, you don't need to be a jerk. You don't need to yell at people. You know, I worked in customer service for six and a half years. I had to call the police multiple times on people screaming at us and things like that. Look, we take our orders if you work at the bank, like anybody else. You're just in there trying to do a good job and be friendly and help people for the most part. But if you know what you're going in and sometimes what these people are selling you, you can have a leg up on the competition. You can know again how to make banks work for you and win. So I hope you guys found this video somewhat valuable. You have any questions, I'm happy to share anything that I've learned over the last six and a half years as a manager. As a, as a teller, as a banker, kind of worked in all facets of the bank. So any questions, fire them down below. I'll do my best to answer. I hope you guys go have the greatest day of your life. Bless up, be kind. Let's go change the world, baby. Have the best day.